a drift anchor. That's or rather a launch anchor. That's the that's the anchor that you throw out just to keep yourself in the harbor. If you if things are good, you just throw that light. It's a light, uh, lightweight anchor. You throw it down, attached to a rope, it holds you when things are calm, just to stop you from moving too far. But then when, when you get out into deep water and the currents kick up a little bit more, you need, the, you, need, you need the drift anchor. That's a heavier anchor that you put down. It's heavier. It sinks into the ground. It's got a sharper edge. And it grabs hold of things to hold you against the current. But when the storm kicks up, you don't need a drift anchor. You need what's called a storm anchor. That's that heavyweight anchor. That's that big metal, ugly thing that you throw it over and it grows onto the ground, and that's the anchor you need when the storms come your way. Well, that's your hope. See, it's one thing to have a good song to cheer up your day. But sometimes life gets so hard. I believe it. I believe in singing and making a melody in your heart to the Lord. Sometimes life gets so hard, you don't know what to sing. One of the psalmists says, how can we sing? In a strange land. Sometimes singing just say, it ain't possible. You're going to need something that's heavier than a song on your lips. You're going to need something that's better than just a catchphrase that you say to, to clear up your day. You're going to need some heavyweight. And that hope, the thing that you need is heavyweight hope. And the, the, the heavier your burden, the heavier your counterweight needs to be. Yes, sir. Y'all hear with me? All right, so it's a it's an anchor for the soul. It says sure and steadfast. That word means unbending and non-slipping. One one thing to have that every, all of these anchors, all of these anchors are usually metal, pure metal, pure iron, through and through, uh, cast iron through and through. That 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 when you put it down because it's connected. Uh, the anchor goes down to the ground, grabs the ground, and then a chain is around that storm, especially that storm anchor. Chain is around the neck, and that chain is connected to not the hull, not the deck, but to the very core, the very soul of that boat. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you don't need something that's going to bend and break yeah. Yeah. when the pressure gives in. Mm -hmm. You don't need something that's going to slip along the side, slip along the ground, and, and because all of this force is trying to push you to the rock, you need something that's going to hold you down yes, sir. and not break and give out. Amen. Right. I'm done. I'm bending and not slipping, keeping us from drifting. Right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Then last thing he says is that it's that enter into behind the veil. And it's a beautiful statement. Because your anchor, your hope anchor, is not on earthly things. Come on, church. Because earthly things change. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's not on people. You got good people in your life, but you can't put your hope anchor in good people. Because even the best of us, of us, good people, ain't good all the time. Right? We ain't good all the time. <laughs> Amen. You need your hope anchored yes. Yes. in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Watch it now, because where is the Lord? Behind the veil. Yes. Yes. What veil? <laughs> Someone says, well, how can it be behind the veil? I thought the veil was written twain from the top to the bottom. You're right. That's the earthly veil. It shows you that that Jewish worship doesn't even work anymore. There's nothing behind it. But he's not talking about the earthly veil. He's talking about the heavenly veil. You know, when Jesus came before God in the heavenly places, bearing his body that was crucified, his body that was sacrificed, he poured blood on the altar in the heavenly. So this is what this is about what Jesus does in the heavenly for us. That our hope is based on the character and performance of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, was buried, rose again, and he went to the right hand of God on high. It's an already done deal. You don't have to have a hope on how things are turned out. Your hope needs to be connected to the sure reaction or sure reality that Jesus died, was buried, rose again, and he's at the right hand of God right now. Do you trust that? Do you believe it? That's where your hope needs to be. That's what will hold you when the storm kicks in. Though the weather changes, though the tempest rages, 
Though everything else falls apart. That's why one writer says, in every hot and stormy day, my anchor holds where? Within the veil. And it's not on people, and it's not on events, it's not on a situation, but it's on Christ. Solid rock, I say. All of the world, every everything else, it's not worth it. But it's in Christ. It's on Christ that we have our security. I'm, I'm done. I just wanted you to see this, though. This is an example of some ancient, quote unquote, graffiti. That, uh, that was found in Rome. Uh, much of it was in the catacombs, but a lot of them. One, one writer said over 88 uh, of these sketches, these carvings, can be found underneath the Colosseum. Uh, <coughs> Y'all know what happened in the Colosseum? Yeah. Yeah. See, I told you earlier, Christians suffered persecution. That wasn't folk just talking about it. One folk treating them mean, rolling their eyes at them. Persecution was that these Christians were taken out to the college. When the, when the Coliseum, I know we saw Gladiator and all that. We, it was a hero thing. But the Coliseum was used to make fun of, to mock, to, to, to answer the bloodlust of Rome. And one of the key people during that time, after 8070, the key group of people that they love to see, brought before the lion, yeah. brought before other killers and wild dogs and things of that nature, were Christians. Yes, sir. Christians. Yes, sir. Who on any given Saturday or Sunday, through the, the cries and jeers of over 50,000 Romans, Romans, Christians, yeah. waited in these catacombs, mm -hmm. waited in these cells, beneath the Colosseum. Can you imagine that? Yeah. You can smell what goes on up in there. You can hear the lions roar, and you can hear the crowd, and you can hear the gladiators and other people waiting to take your life. Mm -hmm. And you know when that door opens up and that sunlight comes into that dark, damp, stinky cell, yeah. and you are brought up in chains, you know what's going to happen. Yeah. They're not going to give you a chance for you to defend yourself. They're not going to give you a chance for you to talk about the goodness of Jesus. You're not going to get to talk about your faith and how faith is changed. They don't want to hear that. They want to see you die. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Along the whole, uh, tens of thousands of Christians, if not more, in their moments before the gate opened, and they were brought before the Colosseum, they grabbed a rock, and they went to the wall. Mm. And they didn't say, I love you, Dad, and love you, Mom. They didn't say, they didn't say, I hate the police. <laughs> Die roll. Mm. Huh? They put a cross oh, with an undergirding underneath mm. to show an anchor. Uh, that no matter how rough and tempestuous yeah, yeah. that Colosseum may be, my soul is anchored. The reason I can go before them without losing my soul, my mind, and my mentality yeah. is because it's anchored. So not in these events, but it's anchored in the Lord. Yeah. And that's, and that's, look, if that worked for them, what I'm saying mm -hmm. is if that worked for them yeah. before the lions did, yeah. I know it's going to work for us yeah. Yeah. in a troubling time. Oh, yes. If that worked for them before they were burned to death, then I know to, I know to help us deal with some old negative attitudes and some nasty people around. As a matter of fact, I'm embarrassed to ever Given. Uh, Those that went before me went through so much more. Yeah, exactly. Paid, had less than I have and, and, and enjoyed less than what I've got, but they still kept the faith. Yeah, I'm embarrassed to ever even think yeah. about giving up on the yeah, one who did, who did everything yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and so I'm encouraged mm -hmm. to be a better person. Yeah. I'm encouraged to be a more hopeful person. 
I'm encouraged to persevere. Are y'all encouraged? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Whatever's pushing against you that makes you want to feel like giving up, I think a lesson like this ought to make you say, I'm going on. I'm not going to let the storms toss me aside. Now, if you're here and you're not a Christian, it's time for you to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because of that faith and that belief and that, that trusting in the word of God, you want to be saved even now. And if you are here, you are a Christian, but perhaps sometimes Christians give up too. Sometimes Christians lose their way. If you find yourself slipping, you want to reestablish that faith. You want to recommit to that hope. Then come now. Come now. Whatever storms may come your way, you got to make sure that your anchor holds within the bed. We, we hope you enjoyed today's lesson, and we'll see you next week.